so nice out. I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing bears out on the flats here. I and mean, it's been so warm. Yeah. I hope the ice is good. So today we're going out to see Mike and his German Shepherd Shiloh. Let's get. He lives right on Chilcat Lake. And we have to snow machine across the lake ice to get out to where his cabin is out on an island. Hello. Thanks for coming out. Yeah. So we're going to be traveling today with Arik and Jordan. And Arik is Willow's boyfriend. Jordan is a good friend of Maya's. These guys have grown up here, riding snow machines since they were big enough to jump on. The ice is really thin this year, and it's always safer if you're traveling on ice that you go with some buddies. I heard the conditions are not so great. No, we'll see how the lake is. It might be a little bit wet. OK. They've been through a lot of sketchy situations, a lot of breakdowns. So just in case we get caught out there, they're really handy to have with us. Ugh, look at that big crack down the lake. Whoa, it goes all the way across. Traveling in backcountry Alaska is serious. I mean, we're miles and miles from anybody. There's no cell service. It's just like you have to be self-sufficient. You know, like kind of one misstep and you fall through the ice and you're soaked and you can really get hypothermic and it can just spiral down from there. Whoa. I'm afraid to turn around. But I just love the adventure of where we live. And working in this beautiful landscape is even sweeter when we arrive safe and sound. Welcome to Chilcat Lake. Thank you. It was quite the experience getting over here with the ice being so It's an adventure. There, yeah. Shiloh's life on Chilcat Lake is like paradise. We hike around the lake as well as the island, and if it's not the frisbee that's getting his attention, it's the moose on the island. He loves it out here, and, uh, and I love it out here with him. It's something in his ear, right? It's that yeah, left, right ear? Especially okay. his right ear is, okay. is the culprit. OK. Shiloh's been having difficulty with his ears in the last couple of months. Come on, Shiloh. He was shaking his head a lot. His right ear would kind of hang down sometimes, and he was scratching it a lot. Did he have an ear infection when it started? Like, was he? did he have an itchy ear and was scratching at it? He or? was scratching it. OK. And I didn't know if he had fever with it. Uh-huh. It did seem kind of red. OK. My biggest concern is, after I looked into his ear, I saw what looked like a pretty decent-sized growth. I'm hoping it's not something that's malignant. OK, sit. Good boy. Good boy. Oh, he's so good. Yeah. OK, hold he's still. Hold so still. Good. Hold still. Stay there. Good boy, Shiloh. Good boy. Stay. Oh, oh, no. No. Don't bite. No. <laughs> Please don't bite. <laughs> Shiloh is super sweet, but his ear is really tender and uncomfortable. And he is very strong. So we're going to have to be really careful. Oh, good sir. Hey, look, look. Good sir, yes. Good boy. Good sir, good sir. Good boy. Yes. Stay there. I think we're going to have a big job to hold Shiloh still for all of this. Hold on, sir. Hold I on, know. sir. No, 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 no. Shiloh. No, no, no. no. Shiloh. OK, I'm yeah. so sorry about that, buddy. It's OK. It's okay. No, 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 it's OK. Stay here. Okie dokie. Yes. Oh, boy. Oh, sir, that's a big bone. Looking in Shiloh's ear, I see a really big mass. It's a funny consistency. It, it looks, you know, like almost purpley. I've really not seen a mass grow in a young dog's ear like this. OK. Stay. Ooh, Stay. It's rough. Oh, Hold on. boy. Good boy, Shiloh. That sure okay. is funny. I would like to maybe try to get a sample from it, just to be sure there's not some weird cells. To have a cancerous tumor type growth in the ear of a really young dog could be really devastating. But I'm really hoping that's not what we're dealing with here. What I'm seeing is a lot of debris in the ear, a little bit of blood. It's stinky, and it's really quite red. But there's no doubt there's some type of yeast or bacterial infection in his ear. Let me okay. look at its other cartilage on this side and just convince myself. 
Oh yeah, it's exactly the same on that side, but it's just not as big. Okay. So I don't even need to, I don't need to sample that. That's just kind of like, ah! Now that I've gotten a really good look at this, I'm relieved. That kind of big, funny-looking mass actually is just swollen cartilage. It's not cancerous. Do you want to wrestle? No, I want to get that off of him, though. Come here. Come here. Oh, come here, come here, come here. The ear infection was the very first thing. He's been scratching at it, and that explains why that cartilage got so poofy and strange-looking. Actually, you know, we're going to put some flush in there first. We're going to flush his ear out, try to get some of that debris out. Oh, boy. Stay. Stay. Sorry, friend. Oh, no and then I'm gonna put the medication in and just leave it in. Oh, no. I know. I know, it's tender, I'm so sorry. As long as we can treat the ear infection and get them to leave the ear alone, that mass in there will just go down back to the normal size. Phew, this is a lot of work. Okay, okay. that was like, a, this is like a farm call. Okay. It's like wrestling a bull. It could have been a lot worse news and I feel so much more relieved because it looks like is gonna be just fine and uh, He's happy as a lark, even after all that mess we put him through. <laughs> Good stuff, Shiloh. Hey, you want a ball? Go get it. Oh, how cute. Go get it, Shiloh. Oh my gosh, how cute. Come watch him slide. <laughs> <laughs>
and immediately I see that his tongue looks funny and swollen. And as he moves it to the side, it looks like there's a big slice in it, and there's actually green thread wrapped twice around the base of his tongue. Oh, gosh. I'm going to yeah. make sure that there's not a needle attached to that. Linear foreign bodies in cats are really common. They like to play with string. Sometimes they'll even swallow a bit of the needle, and it can hang up in there with the string. So I'm not going to try to remove the string just yet. First, I need to take an x-ray and just make sure there's nothing sharp that I need to remove. Okie dokie, you ready? Good cat. Ooh. OK. No needle. All I see is that he is really constipated. So looking at this x-ray, I see lots of backed up poop. I know he hasn't been able to go to the bathroom for a few days, so he is pretty miserable. So much poop. What often happens with linear foreign bodies in cats is if they get hung up on the tongue, the rest of the string continues down the stomach. It can even go out into the intestines, and then it can cause almost like a drawstring effect where the intestines get like bunched in. And if he's got something hooked to his intestines, he's definitely not gonna be able to push. Okay, we're just gonna give him a little bit of sedation so that we can have a better look in his mouth. Often with this kind of a string that's in there, you have to go to surgery to remove it. But to go in and do surgery when I don't know if I need to is definitely something I want to avoid. OK, cross your fingers and hope that we can just pull it very gently out. So what I'm going to do now is just see if I can kind of hook that string and gently remove it. Oh, it wants to come. It feels like it wants to come. I certainly don't want to just try to pull it out. You know, if it's hung up, it's going to actually rip the tissue and cause severe damage to the intestines. So Wait, hang on, hang on, buddy. Oh, it's so lucky. It's coming right. Oh, <gasps> shoot. Uh, it's just, it's not, I thought it was coming, but it was just coming unwrapped from his tongue now. Yeah. Well, I definitely can't pull it. Unfortunately, it has no give at all, and it feels like taut, like it's pulled way down in there. So I'm just going to let it go. OK. So we might end up going to surgery, but for now, we're going to see if he's able to pass it. Darn. Now that I've cut the string and removed it from the tongue, I'm going to give him some enemas, some kind of warm water and lube to try to move things along. Oh, he just curled his little toes. Aww, Did you see that? That was sad. He's shaking. All right, all done. Please go, Boop. Can I give him a little belly massage? Yes. Maybe we should give him a shot of coffee. If it's not passing, he could start to get holes in the intestine, fecal matters leaking out into the abdomen, horrible infections start. A cat can die of that pretty quickly. So we don't want to you know, wait too long, but I definitely don't want to jump into surgery if I don't need to. Hi, Gwen. Come on in. Come back and see Pumpkin. So we did an exam, and we actually did find a string wrapped around his tongue. It was cutting into his tongue and going down his throat. We actually saw a big thing of that green string. Really? But I never imagined that he bit it off. And right, he... no kidding. But it's possible now that we've released it from his tongue that it'll just go right out the back end. OK. And if he suddenly seems like it's just not passing or he's seeming worse, we'll go right to surgery. OK. Gwen's going to take him home. We're going to be checking in about every six to eight hours and see how he's doing. And then I'm hoping that he'll just pass that string and we can just get him back on his feet. All right, and feel free to give me a call later if there's anything comes up. OK, okay? thank you. Right. I actually feel pretty optimistic. Like, earlier today, I thought we were saying goodbye to him. I mean, I'm hopeful, you know, so I guess that's all we can be. Fingers crossed for you, buddy. So, Reindeer Farm today. Ooh, ooh. Exciting, and it's yeah. kind of nice out. Yeah. I know. It is really nice out. So, I'm coming out to the Reindeer Farm because Denise wants me to check out her reindeer sugar. Apparently, she's had some issues with her jaw. There they are. Hello, reindeer. Hey, guys. 
guys. Hey. Today we're going to check on Sugar. She is a seven-year-old reindeer. Sugar was born here on our farm, so we remember her fondly as a baby. And she has beautiful color. She's really white. And when she was born, she had a little white spot right between her antlers. She was so feisty and sassy, we could not train her. I really enjoy her unique personality. That's just sugar. So sugar's had a diagnosis of cancer in oh, the no. jaw. But we also have a confirmed pregnancy test on her. And so oh, okay. we've been trying to keep her going, and she's really crashing. And so oh, we no. were hoping for kind of just an updated check on that and right. a second opinion and okay. see what we find. Sure. But okay. she's not looking real great. Sugar is not eating. She's losing weight. And when would she calve? Is she still a ways away? Uh, about three weeks away. Oh, darn. OK. I just want to give the calf a chance. We're so close. But I'm concerned that she may not make it the three weeks. And then we'll lose both. So I'm anxious to see if there's anything more we could do that can still protect the calf and keep her going. I, mean, I feel from you that you're saying, is this OK? Like, is she suffering? You know, is it OK to keep her going until she calves? And if it's something we feel is not, I mean, we'd yeah. have to euthanize them both. Like, it's not, it's not a nice thing. Maybe the calf isn't even there anymore. Right, I don't know. Yeah. OK, well, that'll be our first step. We'll sedate her so none of this is painful for her. And then I think we'll do a preg check on her. Okay. Is she still pregnant? Because uh -huh. it'd be very easy for her to have, you know, through this process, lost the baby, and it would be hard to tell that. I just get teary-eyed thinking about it, because it's such a hard decision to choose one over the other or just give up on both of them. I'm yeah. so anxious to get my hands on her. I want to see if we can see help her. Yeah, I want to see what's in there and see what we can do for her. Hey, Mama. Oh, don't be sassy. Come on. Oh, she's grumpy already. No. No. Whoa. She's got some feist. I know. She's like ready to take Lauren on. I know. It's a pretty good sign, actually, that she's got enough energy to fight us. Watching Sugar move around, she looks feisty. Come on, Mom. Oh. 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 <laughs> Glad I had that. <laughs> I didn't realize she had that much spunk left in her. She is definitely showing us that she has a lot of life left. Just Watch your face, Sierra. I Mom, I know. You almost got her. <laughs> Sierra's got Sugar up against the board, and I'm a little worried because Sugar's got her antlers, and if she flips that board up, she could get Sierra. I've never seen so much feist in a reindeer. <laughs> oh, dang. <laughs> Gosh. Careful, hon. It's not that Sugar wants to hurt us. She wants to defend her baby if she has one, so, you know? I want to defend my baby, too. I'm a little worried seeing Sierra out there. Come on, Mom. Keep going. Don't, don't turn around. Don't turn around. Oh, she's going to get Whoa. Come on. Goodness. Come on, Mom. <laughs> Let's go. There we go. Go, 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 go. No. Whoa. I think she's done this a few times. Yeah. She knows there you go. Good girl. Okay. I'm injecting right now. All right, let's let her out. I'm opening it. Hey. Whew. Okay. And there is a very real chance that this is the last time we're going to see Sugar awake. Or we might be putting her to sleep today, and that just makes me really, really sad. I wouldn't hate to lose her. Oop, she's down. So we've got Sugar down, and now we're carrying her back into the barn. Okay. We've set up a little makeshift OR here so I can get some x rays, so I can preg check her and see what we can do to help her. Okie dokie. Let's see what we got. Oh, goodness. Her pellet is rotted it holes into it on both sides. Oh, no. That's the roof of her mouth. It shouldn't have those holes there. And then back here as well. It, only cancer could do something that destructive, I think. Wow. As I'm opening her mouth, my heart sinks. What I'm seeing in Sugar's mouth are three large holes in the roof of her mouth, like right through the bone. 
Seeing how much the cancer spread, I mean, that, that seals the deal. I don't really need x-rays. It's a pretty unhappy scene. It's devastating. It's just total destruction. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry, Denise. So the important question now, I mean, yes, we need to end her suffering if we can't keep her comfortable. So I want to check if she is actually pregnant. And if she is, then that changes our course of action. If, if she's not pregnant, then I think we both know yeah. what the right thing is to do for her. So poor thing. That sucks. She's done a great job, you know, battling the cancer up until now. But Denise and I are in agreement. If Sugar is not pregnant, you know, we need to end her suffering. OK, so let me get the ultrasound going. Looking at how skinny she is, I can't imagine that she's also keeping another body alive in there. I mean, she's barely making it on her own. She doesn't look like she's got a baby in there. Unbelievable. What? She's pregnant. I just, I Can just... you see the heartbeat? No, it's, I'm just picking up huge fluid areas. Oh, oh, I see a heart. Do you see that? Is it beating? Yep. That's incredible. I'm just so surprised that she could be pregnant with everything. Like, I'm shocked. After looking at the horrible cancer holes in the roof of her mouth, I thought, no way is she pregnant. But no, there it is. I, I just couldn't tell you anything about the size of it, though. It's just right. so bunched up in there. I can just say she's pregnant and the fetus is, has a heartbeat right now. So I would say we put her on like some heavy pain medications, heavy yeah. antibiotics, and mm -hmm. see if she can make it a couple weeks. Yeah. I feel like there's some hope there. We're not trying to get sugar to live for a year. We're trying to get sugar to make it another three or four weeks. So this is the pain injection for her. I think it's definitely a small chance, but there is a chance. And as long as we can keep Sugar comfortable, if we can get her back eating, then I think it's worth giving it a shot. She's a good mama. She'd want to get her baby mm -hmm. to, to survive, you know? So I think we give her a chance. As long as we can cover her suffering, her pain, which I really feel like we can. So we're going to go for it. We're going to go heavy on the pain meds. If we can manage this pain, let's give it a go and try to save this calf. You know, we're going to do the best we can for her. And day by day, if you see that it's not working, then you know what you have to do. You know? Yeah. So. OK. All right, let me get reversals ready, and we'll take her back to the pen, OK? OK. I mean, I can't really tell you what she's thinking, but I could almost be 100% sure that she wants to do whatever she can to bring the baby she has now to full term. It's just her instinct. It's her whole reason for being. All right, giving her the reversals. I'm still hoping in three weeks, we'll be giving Dr. Oakley a call and letting her know that we just had a healthy baby. Okay. Yes. Good job. Yay. Yes. All right, let's get out of her That's way and let her cue. recover. Yeah. Okay. Before she starts coming after us, really, yeah. is my concern. <laughs> So we sent Pumpkin home, loaded him up on fluids, gave him an enema. I hope I have some good news that he's finally passed the string. That would be great. So fingers crossed, Pumpkin Poop. Hello. Hello. OK, how's Pumpkin? He's doing kind of the same. He's not eating. Hmm, OK. And nothing in the litter box? I suspect he may have, okay. but I'm not sure. We're not really sure when the last time is that he went poop. He may have possibly gone this morning. We have one other cat, so we're not 100% sure if it was his or the other cat's. But there's no green string in, in the litter box, so. I just want to convince myself that we actually need to go to surgery or not. So I'm going right. to do a full physical, check his temperature, do an x-ray on his belly, and then I'll make a plan from there. OK, okay. sounds All good. Right. Okie dokie, come on, sir. I am concerned. I mean, 
I don't know, like he seems like he's doing okay in some ways and in other ways he's, he's not, you know. So let's give him a good going over and see if I can talk myself into surgery or not. I sure don't want to do it if we don't have to. Hi, baby. Of course, I don't want to open up his abdomen and find out that, oh, there goes the string, didn't need to do that. But flip side is, if we wait too long, then it's likely to be cutting the intestines and have perforations where the intestinal contents are getting into the abdomen and causing peritonitis, a really serious infection of his belly. The animal will feel miserable, they'll get a fever, and then they can get septic and die. Oh, sorry, baby. Poor little booty. It's kind of warm. It's kind of feverish, about 104. Pumpkin's temperature is definitely low-grade fever. It's possible that he already has peritonitis that's developing, and it can go quick. They can start out with a low-grade fever and seeming sort of OK, and then boom, they're dead. OK, well, let's get an x-ray for a final check. So we're just going to do another quick x-ray. I want to have a peek at his intestines. But I think if I don't see like clear movement, we'll just go right to surgery. OK, ready? Go ahead. OK, let's have a peek. Ooh, that's not good. He still has lots of poop in there. And this almost looks like the uh, small intestines twisted. I'm sorry, buddy, but we need to get in there and help you. OK, let's get him prepped for surgery. Looking at the x-ray, I can see that the intestines are bunched up. With a low-grade fever, that makes me very suspicious of peritonitis. Maya's just getting the scrub done. I'm giving him some IV antibiotics. Get in there and see what we have to do. He's certainly not improving, so I just can't wait any longer. Start with that. All right, sir. First thing I'm doing is basically just cutting away tissues and getting into his belly. I'm trying to go right down the middle so I don't have to cut any muscles and it'll heal a lot faster like that. So now I'm in there and I can have a look. And man, things feel tight. Oh, wow. Looking accordion. Yep. <laughs> Whoa. So you can see they're all bunched in as if there's something got them all sewn together, because something does. Here's like a normal looking length. See how it just lays flat? And it's not all bunched up. And then you get back here, and it's all totally bunched up. So 100%, there's a linear foreign body that's wrapped around the intestine. I'm really glad to see that, but now I need to get to work. Okie dokie, so I think I'll start here. As you can see, oh, look at that. Look what wants to come right out <gasps> and say hi. A little bit of thread. Oh, it's so bunched up in there. <gasps> wow, there's, there's a whole wad of it there. I wondered. How much did you eat? Looks like he ate the whole darn thing. He really likes the green stuff, doesn't he? Yuck. So as I'm starting to pull a little bit of string, I'm kind of hopeful that I got it. So I'm going to see if I can work some more out. Ah, uh, it's not moving. And then it just stops. So it's tempting to just want to pull it, but as you can see, when I pull it, it's actually tightening up this part of the intestine. So that's as far as I can go. So I'm going to have to go over here and try and pull it the other way. I'm going to have to go a little bit further up the intestine and find the next spot. And hopefully, I won't have to make too many cuts to get the whole string. So I'm going to go further down now to where it looks pleated again. See how it's all gathered and bunched here still? There could be a lot of string in here, because I mean, it just keeps going and going. So there's the string. I'm going to get as much of that as I can, and then move on to another spot. I'm amazed at how much string we're pulling out right now. There's like a pile next to my mom, and there's more coming. Oh, he just mowed down on the whole. I know. Like, he, that, this wasn't just like, oops, I accidentally got a string in my mouth. This was like, I'm going to eat the whole spool, because that would be fun. 
I'm impressed, but a little horrified. Ooh, it smells so bad, too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna close that in a sec, but I wanna see if I'm done. And you can see that all kind of straightens out nicely. So I'm just feeling to make sure it feels good, and it does. I've been up and down the length of the small intestine, right up to the base of the stomach, and this is it. I've got it all. And it's a ton. There's a lot of string there. And one thing I'm also looking for is perforations. Like, do you see that? That's getting ready to perforate. So that was, it hadn't yet, but that kind of area will leak that intestinal contents into the gut. Eek. And that's when they get peritonitis. Now I'm gonna go along the length of the intestine and make sure that some of these darker areas that looked like they had almost been cut by the string, I wanna make sure they haven't actually cut open or perforated yet. Okay, so I've got the stomach out now, kinda of here, and I'm looking to make sure the stomach looks okay, and it does. Those perforations will just be another way for all the fecal material, all that bacteria to leak into the belly, and that's Definitely deadly, they can get septic and they can die quickly. This is colon, you can see all those hard tutus in there. No! I just found a perforation. <gasps> oh, look at that. So I found a little area of perforation where the thread had been kind of stuck and pulling it, it cut a hole in the intestine, so there's some yucky business coming out of it. I'm so glad I found that spot because that would have been the death of them. So I'm basically cutting away the dead tissue. And I'm gonna put the good stuff back together. He definitely was starting with some peritonitis because he's got some fluid in his belly that's coming up now. That's probably why he wasn't eating. Okay. Bye-bye, behave now. So it's gonna be really touch and go with Pumpkin over the next couple days. Yes, I got the string out, but he is not out of the woods yet. He's been through a lot, and now his body has to fight off the little bit of the infection that's gonna remain. Hi, Hello. come on in. He's doing so good. Aww. <laughs> it's been honestly kind of a rough week. <laughs> the hardest thing I think was knowing he was suffering and also seeing my poor kids, you know, after a tough year just really hoping they didn't have to say goodbye to someone they loved again, so. So this is all the string. There was oh, so wow. much of it. And it was actually like, the intestines were just like so accordioned up that there was no way it was gonna pass, so. So I'm gonna send him home now with some pain meds, and hopefully I hear from her that he's both eating and pooping, if not by tomorrow, by the next day. Now it's kind of up to him, and Hopefully, he gets through it. I mean, he's got a little bit of recovery, but he certainly has been strong throughout this. Oh, baby. Yeah. Ooh, look at all the snow. We just arrived at the Alaska Wildlife Conservation Center and we're gonna be checking out one of the porcupines today, Baby Ruth. So, lovely weather. Welcome to Portage. Yeah. Yeah, we good. had spring two days ago, but yeah. now we're in our fifth winter. Oh, nice. What do we have to do today? Well, we've got Baby Ruth, I think, could use a little checkup this morning. Oh, no, okay. Baby Ruth is our three-year-old North American porcupine that was brought in from Homer, Alaska. She was abandoned at a trailhead we think she was probably cared for prior to that because anytime someone would get out of their car, she'd come scampering up and be like, please give me some food. And that's not gonna work for a porcupine in the wild. So she was picked up by Fishing Game, given a permanent home here at the Wildlife Center, and that's where she's been ever since. We've just noticed that she's pretty drooly lately. Oh. Like the other day in particular, she was like drooling profusely and chattering, oh. which sometimes I think is just stressful, but she's also, you know, she's just a really picky porcupine. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> What we've been noticing with baby Ruth is when we're in there with her, she's been chattering her teeth, which in porcupines can sometimes be an indication of stress. But we don't know if she's stressed because maybe she's got some dental problems going on. We do also notice that she's become very picky with her food. 
Hi, little girl. <laughs> She's already turned her back. Have you worked with Baby Ruth before? I don't know if I worked with Baby Ruth. She's a diva. Baby Ruth is a straight up diva. Baby Ruth? I mean, I wouldn't come out of my house if it was like this outside, so. Yeah, no kidding. I can't blame In her if she does I sympathize with her. Yeah. This lady doesn't want to come out of her house if it's raining, snowing, windy. There we go. Nope. Nope. So whenever we need Baby Ruth to come outside, we have to lay out the red carpet. And by red carpet, I really mean just a piece of green turf. She doesn't know that, though, so we're not going to tell her. They have to put it on her bridge so she feels like she's walking on a nice turf. Yeah, she deserves nothing less. What a good girl. There we go. Good job. Oh, they got her. We got a thumbs up. I'll say 100. All right, we did it. So we get the thumbs up from Brittany, which is awesome. So we're gonna take baby Ruth in and give her a really good physical and check out all of her teeth. Whoop, beep, beep. Where would you like her? Oh. This beautiful, beautiful princess. Oh, she Ooh. stinks too. Oh my gosh. Porcupine it B.O. It smells like B.O. It, it does. does. Yeah, okay. It's pretty roundy. So porcupines smell like really, really bad B.O. And it sticks to your clothes too. Like, you, after working on a porcupine, you smell like a porcupine for like the next two days. It is, it is pretty raunchy. <laughs> okay, friends, this is my porcupine shield. What do I get? I'm, in, I'm reaching in there to inject. To sedate a porcupine, it's actually kind of tricky because how do you poke a porcupine? There's not really a lot of spots. Okay, pin up in there. Oh, she's so mad. Oh, man. That, watch that tail doesn't whip me. Oh, God, don't get nailed. Oh. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, didn't like that. Okay, 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 I'm in there, I'm in there. Okay, woo! Angry rodent. I mean, certainly when an animal is fussy about their food or drooling, you have to wonder about, is there something going on in the mouth? Is it a bad tooth? Is there a foreign body? Like, they can get poked by their own quills, for sure. And porcupine are really prone to getting dental disease and having tooth problems. Oh, sweetheart. She vicious girl. The nice thing about her yawning like this is I can do a little oral exam while she's doing that. Poor baby Ruth. She's got the big silent scream face on. I think it's a little bit aggressive. Like, I will bite you. You know, she just wants to bite me, but she's a little out of it and not quite sure what's going on. Let me see a big yawn. Ooh, perfect. So the teeth all look pretty good. Yeah. I'm not only looking at her teeth, I'm making sure there's not a foreign body in her mouth, that there's not a irritation or an ulcer underneath there. But everything looks totally normal. So we're gonna do dental x-rays now to just look at the roots of her teeth to make sure there's nothing insidious and deep that I couldn't see with my eyes. Sometimes rodents will be kind of frothy because they have a sore mouth. But they also can be frothy if they just don't like the food they got. So getting an x-ray helps me to make sure that's all we're dealing with here. OK, so we did some x-rays of her teeth. They're looking real good. Nice and smooth, normal looking teeth. I don't see anything unusual that's causing her drooling. So now I want to check for any other issues. So I'm going to look in her ears. So here's her teeny tiny ears. Normal looking ear and ear wax. I'm gonna look in her nose because sometimes any kind of irritation or quill or even a growth in her nose can be what causes them to go off their feet and have trouble eating. Oh, hairy nose. That looks good. They have a few different spots where quills can get to and you need to look in all of them. Ooh, did you hear that little fart? <laughs> it was so cute, it was like a little porcupine poot. Let no porcupine orifice go unexplored. Checked her teeth, felt her squishy parts, kissed her feet, and now she can get up. OK. Hey, Overall, her physical exam looks totally normal. So I'm going to have to chalk up the chattering and frothing to just behavioral. She's just kind of picky about what she's eating. So really, it's the porcupine. You know, porcupines can be picky and pokey. There you go. How's that? 
lifting your head already? She's a grumpy girl. Good girl. So I'm glad to know that baby Ruth definitely doesn't have any dental problems. Turns out that baby Ruth is just the diva. She's so cute and stinky. He does like his food a lot. When we first brought Pumpkin home, there was still a lot of hesitation with the risk of infection, but I mean, he's doing great. After the surgery, we really had to watch how much he was eating because he just wanted to eat all the time. He has no idea that Dr. Oakley saved his life, you know, and we're just grateful. Poor baby. Yeah, he, he loves Jada. <laughs> you know, if we lost Pumpkin, it's not the same as losing my dad, but loss is still loss. Hey. And I think with losing my dad, seeing Pumpkin bounce back, there's just been this thread of hope, like, you know, we can go forward. And, you know, in some ways, I guess it's kind of like this garden out here. It's kind of ugly. Everything looks dead. But I know in the summer, these flowers are taller than the garden gates. And they spill out, and it's just the most beautiful thing. I could use a baby cuddling. Day has broken, but I'm staying here. Sugar did not make it. She passed away. When they checked, the baby had passed as well. And it, it wasn't going to make it. It was very tiny. It was months away from being full term. So that's a bummer. And this is Sugar's previous baby from last year. You know, you can't save them all, but it's important to still keep going and trying. It's an emotional job, and, you know, some people are better able to keep their emotions out of it. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not one of those people. <laughs> It's hard to let it go when you can't save them. But it's a good reminder to be out here and see the ones that make it and they're healthy. And, you know, all the new life. This job can definitely crush you sometimes. It's a roller coaster on a daily basis. But, you know, I want to live. I want to cry. I want to laugh. I want to love, and it is, um, it is a full life, and I'm so happy to be living it. These moments, it's, it's what it's all about.